Good afternoon and welcome to the annual general meeting of the Greater Tiger Bank Partnership for the year that's been tumultuous at best, the year that we just finished in our financial year in June 2020, but the calendar year has been turned upside down by various factors and all of those I'm sure you know well. I'd like to express a special thank you to all of you for attending, for logging in and, and watching. Um, we've got some very special thank yous to Alderman Felicity Purchase, who's joining us today, as well as various other city councillors who've logged in and are joining us, Councillor Van der Merwe, Councillor Van Sale, uh, Councillor Schmidt, and the rest of the City of Cape Town representatives. Thank you for joining, and the rest of you. Our studio guests today are, are, I've mentioned Felicity Purchase. Um, we're going to have our Chairman, Justin Kutsia, as well as the Chairman of our Audit and Risk Committee meeting, um, Johan Bester. Kicking off the year, has, we were enthusiastic. We were looking forward to great things in 2020. I think in January and February, we were charging off. We had some big projects in hand. We'd come off a successful 2019, and the team were, were really geared for what was going to happen in 2020. Come March, a lot of things turned upside down, and we had to be as flexible as possible. And I know there are a lot of key words being thrown around, like pivoting, et cetera, but we had to change what we were doing quite succinctly to start supporting communities that needed us desperately. So a lot of the projects we were involved in uplifting and, and regenerating the Belleville and Para area had to be refocused to supporting communities. And we did that quite successfully. What we're gonna show you now is a, is a short video clip of some of the highlights of what happened at the GTP over the last 12 months ending in June. And look for yourself as to, as to what we've done and what we've achieved. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Here's the video.
it's been fascinating. And uh, I'm sure like, like all of us, things like Zoom webinars, Zoom meetings, um, Teams meetings have become common day. This is the first time we're doing an AGM in this format. And I'm not sure how many other companies have held their AGM in a, in a isolated broadcast room. But we, again, thank you for joining us. And I'd like to express a special thanks to Harvest Zevenster and the Blowdrick Media team and Truth TV for allowing us to use their studio. Uh, the setup here is exceptionally professional and um, we're hoping to utilize this for further conversations in and around Belleville coming forward. Our first guest speaker is, is someone very special and we're very privileged to have her here in the studio. The Alderman Felicity Purchase has been in politics for over 25 years. In fact, while I was, while I was looking at my notes, I noticed that she has city in her name and she's certainly got city <laughs> in her blood. Um, she's started in Fishhook and the municipality in Fishhook, graduating to deputy mayor there. Um, she's been on the MAKO of the city of Cape Town under the, the uni city since 2008. She's played different roles on the, on the mayoral committee meeting, members meeting. She is passionate about what she does. She's active in the areas she represents. She's now a MAKO member for transport, and we really appreciate you being in studio at this seat. Thank you, and we're looking forward to hearing what you have to say. Well, it's a pleasure, and thank you for having me. And to your members out there, uh, good afternoon to all of you. Um, yes, I, you know, I thought I would just go through some of the things that uh, the city has uh, in, in mind for, for Belleville, uh, for the Greater Tigerberg area and in conjunction with the Greater Tigerberg Partnership. So if you, um, and, I'm, and I'm sure that you might very well have seen some of the stuff before, and, um, and I have a problem. <laughs> All right. So, I mean, really we've got the, um, the redevelopment of, of the area. When all else fails, go to manual. Okay. So we're talking about some of the the um, the things that we have, which is um, uh, for for Belleville area, which has uh, suffered a substantial amount of urban decay. I mean, you know, we we recognise that CBDs have since time immemorial gone through cycles, and uh, it has been a very uh, depressed cycle for this area for some time. So <clears throat> we've put a, a team together and what we, what we have in mind um, is this project to, to refresh and, um, and upgrade uh, uh, the Belleville area. And of course, if it works for Belleville, well, then it will work for the entire Cape Town um, as we roll it out into different areas. So um, Cape Town is a city of, of, of modes and um, and Belleville, in fact, was a city before the, the great controversial uni city uh, um, amalgamation. So, but what we do need to do is to give it back that status where it has, um, it, it really has the recognition and the importance that it deserves. Uh, it is, um, as I said, it's had, it suffered a lot of blight, a lot of disinvestment. And, um, and now we want to change that. So we, we have started around the integrated uh, public transport interchange and we've invested quite a lot of money into the mobility space. So we, we believe that's an opportunity to, to really kick off the regeneration. And um, if we look at the way we manage that space now, uh, it's a completely new precinct. To be honest, we have not been managing our public transport uh, space as well over past years, none of them, but it gives us an opportunity now to tidy up and improve Belleville. So we're improving uh, not only because of COVID and all the safety uh, regulations, but we're improving it because we wanted to continue in that vein going forward. We need to have well-managed public transport interchanges, which includes the safety and security function as well. Um, so, so we're doing the, the health issues, but we're also doing the safety issues, uh, and, and that in itself, I've been down here quite a lot at the, at the uh, PTI, and it certainly improved substantially. There are other issues around it, which we, which we will have to deal with, but I do believe that the way we're doing the PTI now um, is a model going forward, and, and it will include the informal trading, it includes the entire space. 
Uh, it's much easier to manage. It's much easier to control. And I think we should be doing it jointly, which we are talking about. So um, what we have is that uh, we have a clear and functional uh, safe PDI. We've improved the communication. We've got cameras all over and we're managing those um, on an ongoing basis. Uh, we've um, also uh, got additional infrastructure which we brought into the area. And so I'm, you know, together with the, the VPUU, the, which is the Mayoral Urban Regeneration Program, we see that that space uh, is improving daily. So here are just a couple of, um, of photos of recent improvements to the aesthetics and the uh, streetscape. And these were in the Elizabeth Park, which is off the Fortrecker Road at the Chris Carl um, area. And it just shows how you can, with a bit of money, with a bit of investment, actually improve a space and make it um, safe and, and, and desirable again. So that's just to show you what we have uh, planned. And, and of course, it will roll out going forward uh, further and further into different spaces. So here's the completed park area. It's now um, a, a desirable space to be in. It's a little amphitheater. It's a play, play space for kids, a bit of a gym place for adults. So altogether, it just improves the tone of the area completely. And um, so, so hopefully we can, um, we can take that model, that uh, aesthetic, that uh, uh, sort of landscape process across the entire area. So if you look at, um, at the growth and, 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 and that of the Belleville area, uh, everything tends to revolve around um, mobility and traffic. And of course, you know, uh, traffic is the biggest problem we have around Cape Town at the moment in terms of congestion. Here's just a slide showing you the area and the, the sort of main areas in and out of, of Belleville. But you'll see that the important linkage which we need to do is the Blue Downs Corridor, which will link the Southeast Kailicha Mitchells Plain area directly to Belleville without having to go uh, west into the Claremont Cape Town area and then east again. So it doesn't make sense. We are in talks with um, both uh, Na National uh, Department of Transport. We are in talks with Prasa, Transnet, uh, on a regular basis, trying to assist them to get the, the central line up and running, and, uh, and then to be able to also, of course, do the Blue Downs Corridor. There are other talks uh, going on in the background about other opportunities, but at this point, you know, the focus will be on the links that we can put in, which will improve mobility in and around the Belleville area. So there are some of the roads that uh, in red where we are either working already or we are going to be working in the near future, in the short term, uh, to improve linkages. And ultimately what we want to do is to have a ring road around from the, uh, what we call the R300, but to have it going up north uh, and, and then of course, uh, sort of west uh, in the south, southwest area. So then we will have a circular uh, drive around it, but it is a way of then improving access into the area, but also then uh, once you have those sorts of ring roads, you can potentially improve the ability to have public transport working effectively. So those are some of the issues. The big issue here we've got, um, you'll see there in the sort of middle west area is the um, Belcon area which is currently um, used particularly by Transnet around the, um, the, the back of port. Uh, obviously, we have a plan to move that to uh, Crycon in the east uh, and freeing up this property for development of a whole lot of, a whole range of other opportunities. And, um, and we believe that if, if, if the back of port Belcon uh, is moved to Crycon, it creates a better accessibility into the Soldana area. And ultimately, of course, we would like to see more of the containerization move into Soldana. And then that just makes this space much more livable, but also desirable for investment. And I mean, there's the linkages with all the, um, the, the universities, the industry uh, and commerce. And so I think it will certainly improve the, the quality of the CBD and the environment around that and the safety and, and um, just the general ambience. Um, 
So we've put aside a, a huge amount to be invested into the CBD area. And you'll see some of those links there are, are in the process of being done. Some are completed. And, um, and those are all on the, the cards in the short term. Um, so here are some of the planned improvements that we have going forward. I don't know if you can read it, but um, I think just for noting, uh, perhaps um, uh, Warren can share the, the, the presentation with you. Um, and then if we look at the Belleville opportunity area, this is the area particularly around the public transport interchange. I know that Prasa, Prasa Cress are currently um, trying to acquire some of that space for major development. And that's all uh, sort of bodes well for the improvement uh, of the area because once we have substantial investment, it just, you know, it, it sort of uh, mushrooms from there onwards. So there you can see the, the taxi rank and, um, and the, the, the rail connection, the station, but that area is certainly the hub and it needs to be prioritized in terms of development. Now, here is the vision. Of course, the vision is not going to happen overnight, but it is something that we are working collectively towards. And if we can all uh, sort of buy into the vision jointly with, uh, with industry and commerce uh, and, and work towards it incrementally, we will find that it happens uh, so certainly a lot sooner than if we were to do it alone. And, um, and uh, the fact of the matter is none of us can work alone because you know, we, we, we have to do this together. And I think that we certainly have the buy-in. We have the joint vision. This is a joint vision which we've workshopped through with um, you know, uh, yourselves as the Greater Tigerberg Partnership, but also with the, the sub-council and the various other civic organizations. And if you look at um, some of these precincts, uh, you'll see uh, where we expect the growth to happen uh, in, in different, obviously, sections, uh, one section at a time, so to speak. But, um, but you do need to have the, the greater vision so that we're all pulling in the same direction. So there's some of the other opportunity areas. And, um, and this is the vision for the, the sort of uh, PTI, where we will go underground if we bring our light rail in that um, I, I really would like to bring in. That will come in underground and uh, in this particular precinct, then of course you'll have your next layer, you'll have your taxis ranks above that and pedestrianization and linkages to business. So um, that's the vision and that is what we're all collectively working towards. And there's just another uh, map which gives you ideas in terms of the different usages which are uh, commercial, uh, uh, public transport, et cetera, et cetera. And there it is, ultimately what we could have on our, um, on our uh, plan um, going forward. I mean, this is a, obviously it's a sort of a superimposed model, but it is, um, it is something to aspire to. Right. Leslie, thanks very much. Um, firstly, <laughs> very grateful that you shared some of those images with us. I think there's uh, there a lot of people in Belleville specifically who've been looking forward to, to what the city are planning. I think there's been a lot of speak about uh, regenerating that PTI area. Transport plays such a huge role for Belleville. Um, it's, it's really is an honor to have the head of the transport um, with us today. And as, as I mentioned earlier that we might be having conversations around this in this forum going forward and having a, a more detailed conversation with you specifically would be a, an absolute privilege. Would be remiss of me not to ask you a question or two while you, while you are here um, under the spotlight. The transport and mobility is so key for Belleville. It, it's, we, it's referred to as the second largest interchange. In fact, it's, for me, it's the largest interchange as the city of Cape Town, TBD is a, is a destination point. The, the public transport infrastructure I know not all of it's under the city's jurisdiction. What is the plan around getting the, the infrastructure working properly outside of just the physical buildings? So you're talking about the roads particularly. Road. So the roads, uh, which includes, of course, sidewalks and other linkages. So we have just completed a um, 
there are two things. There's the one is the congestion strategy, which we've pretty much uh, we've, we've dealt with. We've had um, consultants do various um, options for us, and we are working towards that in conjunction both with uh, provincial government, because some of the roads are provincial roads, and in fact, the work on the N2 recently on that one bridge that was predominantly done by, um, by provincial. So we work together with this. Uh, so the, the, there are two things. So we're working on the congestion strategy because we recognize that although we don't want 1.2 people in each car on our roads all the time, until we have a really effective and efficient and safe public transport system for, for everybody, uh, we are not going to stop the, the individual cars. So, so we have to do both. So we're doing the congestion strategy because eventually I think population growth will pick up whatever we lose on, on public transport. But I'm hoping that ultimately with the connection of the Blue Downs um, link uh, and also with our, um, our planned light rail uh, option, which obviously still requires a little bit more uh, work on it, but we, we believe that we will be able to get a safe and, public, uh, and, and, and efficient public transport system for everybody. And then that does not uh, negate the need for taxis. Uh, the minibus taxi industry, I think, is here to stay, but it will be in a, a different um, business model. Mm -hmm. So the aspiration is, and the city has been working on this for some time, and we do have a pilot that's, under, uh, that's operational already, um, uh, is that you, you collect your routes and you turn each route into a business uh, model, into a company, and, and, and then they work. And, and the, 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 the route that it's operated in now, which is in Mitchell's Plain, have been very, very delighted with the success and the economies of scale that they've developed and the fact that they are not all running around now after the same uh, money because now they plan their routes better the drivers actually get leave, they save in operational costs. And um, so the model is, it works. What we have to do now is to go sell that to each rank, uh, each uh, route. And, um, and province are coming on board with, with something uh, along that lines. And of course, even national um, is now talking about this is the way to go. So what we will do is as we get those, those operating companies on different routes operational, we will probably put them in the My City livery and they will be on the last mile, so to speak. So they become feeder routes uh, into a, a proper um, effective public transport system, which includes My City buses, uh, light rail and, um, and, and heavy rail. Perfect. Uh, we've been very privileged to be part of, of some of this planning, some of the vision creating. I know we've been working with the Urban Catalytic Investment yes. Team um, the urban planning team and the sub council, the and I think it is important to embrace the the taxis and the, and the taxi routing and the taxi businesses. I think it's it's part of what we do and it's part of how we move people around the city. And I think it is critical. So we we're very pleased to to hear that you are doing that. Um, I know I'll have a lot of urban planners and a lot of people, community members, talking to us around what is the role of non motorized transport. How are we integrating the NMT strategy into a place like Babel where we get public mobility back into, into an area like that? So you have to make the roads safe uh, for, for cyclists, if, essentially. Um, I mean, we only have 1% of our um, population using cycles, and um, I have quite an intimate knowledge of that industry. So, um, and, and, and ideally, we should be at 8%. There are various reasons for that, and, and, and the, the chief one is safety. So, um, so there is a there is a a model that's coming that's come out where we call it uh, uh, cycle trains, where a bunch of people will collect at a spot and then cycle together. And of course, there's always safety in numbers to uh, uh, destinations which are which they share. So that is something which is developing um, in the background in the in the uh, southern suburbs, and I think it will probably be rolled out everywhere. Um, and, and we're also looking at, as a city, of, um, of, of finding a mechanism through donor funding to sponsor cycle, cycles to school kids, because that's the big problem, and that's why we have congestion, is everybody takes their little darling to school at, at peak time. And, and you know, and you understand why, because they don't feel safe elsewhere. The, 
we're PC heroes. I know we we specifically are working on a couple of projects on on not just cycling but non-motorized transport generally and getting yes. people back into public spaces and using the proper routes. Pedestrianisation, exactly. exactly. And um, we're working with with provincial governments and yourselves on some of those projects. Yeah. So we we're very pleased to be progressing there, and hopefully some of the initiatives and models we produce could play a role in the city's strategy going forward. So yes. I'm, I'm pleased. So we, we, we do get a non-motorized transport budget and we spend that specifically in areas of upgrading cycle tracks in a way there's uh, the volume requires, uh, or we believe it will generate the volume of cyclists, but also for uh, pavements, uh, as you say, dropped curbs, um, tactile, uh, uh, curbs and things like that for dis people with disabilities. So universal access, the whole lot. Okay. Um, we do have a, a Q and A button on your on your PCs. I'm going to refer quickly to a question which I believe is um, been sent in by one of our viewers. The city expressed the desire to have an eight percent mode share of cycling by 2030. I believe this requires substantial cycling infrastructure in the Belleville area but did not see reference to, reference to it in the presentation. Are these separate plans? I think you have- So, so yes, the non-motorized transport is, is, is running independently of, of this project. Okay. And you'll see, I mean, it's not Belleville, but we've just done extensive work in that regard around the Durbanville and that, uh, that area. And we will be doing it elsewhere too. Okay, thank you. I'll see there's a question around Pan City. I know you and I have had a conversation offline around the Pan City and, and the initiatives there, and it, it is a, severe political football and I know a lot of people are concerned with what's going on there and to the best of my knowledge there, there are a lot of very powerful people in the city trying to resolve that issue so I don't want to put you too much on the spot but so it is an issue that is extremely contentious and the city is uh, daily trying to resolve it both with the Minister of Public Works and also the Minister of Home Affairs and we also into you know we exchange or we, we were in uh, daily contact with SAPs around those issues. Okay, perfect. Firstly, not to, I mean, we, I could speak to you all day, so I, don't, I could tie up this whole thing in a transport discussion and a city of Belleville discussion. Um, I'd like to express again, a huge thank you to you specifically for, for coming in and making time to talk to us. I think we will line you up at some stage for a more in-depth conversation, um, but thank you very, very much. If there's anything else you want to share with our members, our audience. So if I may just use the opportunity, you know, you, you spoke about uh, the roads and mobility. So also it does require that you have um, roads that are in a good condition. So we have just finished, well, just sort of in the middle of lockdown, June, we finished our uh, pavement management system report where every road in Cape Town, in the greatest city, every road was um, investigated and um, a survey and audit was done of its, its state. And so our, um, our officials are now categorizing, the, you know, they're, they're categorized into very poor, poor, good and excellent. So we're going through that process and budgets will be done according to that uh, scientific data uh, going forward in terms of which roads get repaired. So in the moment, we're trying to catch up with our huge pothole uh, deficit through lockdown. Six months have not been able to fix potholes. I mean, it's absurd. And also the fact that our depots are not at 100% capacity because we have the COVID regulations and the unions and comorbidities and all those other horrible things. So, so we are trying desperately to catch up, um, but we will get there. We will probably only get there uh, sort of uh, first quarter of next year, but the, the, the more comprehensive work done on, on uh, reinstatement of, of or, or resurfacing of major sections of road will be factored in according to that scientific model. And it's not that they do the road next to my house, <laughs> because that looks terrible, but it's because it's, it's based on the number of vehicles okay. using the road, et cetera. It's, it's you know, it's, it's not just a thumb suck. Perfect. Now, it's actually and we do a, a huge amount of research ourselves and we produce a huge amount of data around not only traffic users, but also pedestrianization and how many pedestrians are using yes. different routes. So a lot of that information I think is utilized by, by yourselves in, in assessing priorities and, and we're pleased to participate in that. I see there was a, a mention from, from one of our colleagues to, to reiterate the fact that we are working with the city on a NMT strategy for Belleville and just to put everybody's mind at rest that that is in fact what we're doing. So we will be working with your department and, and others within the city around 
specifically. Well, I mean, if we could all ride to work or walk to work Absolutely. or run to work, we'd all be healthier. Yes. <laughs> so, you know, there are pros and cons for everything. But yes, no, we do want people to be more um, So again, active. thank you. I think it's it's very clear the city have reprioritized Bell and specifically the PTR area as a, as a focus area. I was down in the PTR last week, Friday. There's been a huge effort in tidying it up, in cleaning it up. I think there's been a, a general feeling of progression, what's happening in the PTR, barring what's happening with the refugees, and I know it is a separate issue, but we're pleased to see that there is some progress, and we look forward to having a chat to you again. Alderman, thank you very, it's very much. my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we are continue now with another transport specialist, ironically. The, the chairman of our board is Justin Kutsia. He not only is the co-founder and CEO of Go Metro, but he is also he's also the now CEO of Go Sendal, which is an international transport um, company. Justin has been CEO, not CEO, he's been chairman of our organization for almost two years now and has played a key role in not only integrating us into a lot of transport conversations, but in guiding the, the GTP through what has been quite a tumultuous year and period. So I'd like to introduce Justin Kutsia, the chairman of the Grace Tiger Week Partnership and, and hand over to him now. Good, thank you, Warren. Um, so it's really interesting times we live in. Uh, this has been a leap year, not only that it's uh, 2020, but also that uh, we've lived four years in one, haven't we? Uh, as a society, uh, as a city, uh, but also as an organization. Um, because this year, not only have we had uh, the business to do of the organization and its mandate, but we've also had to deal with enormous challenges, lockdown regulations that have changed week by week, hour by hour, uh, having to deal with uh, uh, the response to this uh, pandemic. We've had to redesign our businesses, redesign our organizations. Everyone's on Zooms and Teams meetings and on mute. Uh, and it's been really interesting to see everyone's homes. Um, uh, and then we've also had to now think about rebuild, reset, and what those opportunities are. So today, it's uh, according to the agenda, um, my first task is to just reflect on the minutes of last year's AGM. This is, uh, although we do not have uh, an audience uh, with us, we uh, are required to review our minutes of uh, last year's AGM. They are available online and they are um, out um, on, on the website. Um, you can also then get um, a message for that, um, for, 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 for the minutes. So last year we had uh, our meeting on the 3rd of December at 3 p.m. Uh, at the new National Hotel in Port Tracker Road. Um, we, uh, after the opening and welcoming, we established a quorum, and I, I do believe we have established a quorum at this meeting, although it is virtual. Uh, so just a few highlights from last year's meeting. Of course, we presented the audited financial statements and reports. We uh, uh, reported on changes of directors. We had had two resignations on the board, and we had filled those with two candidates, um, um, according to the the nominations uh, committee. Uh, the audits uh, had been successfully done by Price Waterhouse Coopers, um, and we had had a clear and clean audit, um, and our financial statements were uh, accredited by the board and presented to the members and adopted at that meeting. Uh, the uh, chairman's report really focused on revitalization and rolling up our sleeves and working in our communities. Um, we had the uh, establishment of the board, a great uh, investor conference. Uh, we had launched the Cipla nursing facility um, and we had um, the support of the city with regards to our uh, business plan. Um, our keynote speaker was uh, Jean-Pierre Nortier from Devmark Property, who presented on the Galleria development and the plans for the Galleria uh, uh, development next to Tiger Valley Mall. Uh, we had a report back from our CEO. Uh, we had reflected on the membership strategy and the membership of the organization and the partnership. And then there had been no questions on the meeting and the meeting had successfully closed. So I, I've reviewed these minutes. Um, they are in accordance with the uh, rep representation of the meeting. And um, we uh, as a board have agreed to adopt them 
um, for the uh, reflection of the uh, annual general meeting last year. Of course, this meeting is minuted and the statutory requirements will be available um, once we complete our, our meeting. Okay, so that completes the um, uh, reflection on the minutes uh, according to our agenda item. Uh, the next item is Chairman's Report. Okay, so 2020 has been a very difficult year uh, for everybody. Um, we have had uncertainty, we've had the unknown. We started uh, the year, I think everyone started optimistically. We were, you'll recall, going to have the Olympics. Uh, South Africa had just been appointed uh, uh, world champions in, in rugby. Um, there was an election uh, in, this, in the United States towards the end of 2020. But I think we all started the year optimistically, feeling that this is uh, uh, gonna be our year. And boy, did we all get it wrong. Uh, this little virus that we heard about in uh, Wuhan, uh, of course, has wreaked untold havoc uh, globally. Economically, socially, uh, no sector is untouched. And definitely the world we live in today is not the world we lived in uh, when we started 2020. And so with that in mind, I think the GTP and the work put in by the board, uh, by the new CEO, by our outgoing CEO, of course, from two, three years ago, um, as well as the support from the city has really helped us survive and I think thrive in a very difficult year. Uh, all thanks to Warren and his team of very hardworking uh, 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 professionals uh, who do the day-to-day -day work at the GTP. I think our board um, this year has never been better attended, better uh, participated in, um, thanks to the wonders of technology. Anyone can zoom in. Uh, or teams in from anywhere where they are. And so I, I think our board has been very, very active. And we really welcome the proactive support uh, and direction setting that we have from our liaisons at the city, both at a council level, as well as at the official level. Uh, the feedback we are getting on our business plan, the insights, the inputs, we've never felt more engaged and aligned with our uh, primary fund of the city. And we thank the city for all the uh, energy and effort that they've put in. Of course, um, going virtual has its, its, its limitations, it has its challenges, but also it's pointed the way for a future organization, one that is as digital as it is physical. Yes, we, we don't need to be bound to a building, we don't need to be bound to a space. Um, we we'd certainly think that the programs of the GTP and the, the mandate of the GTP uh, can, can, can thrive in cyberspace and can really thrive with a digital agenda. And just like every other organization has had to adopt a digital agenda very aggressively, so has GTP. Uh, going, uh, our investments in our website, our investments in the Belleville Connect application couldn't be more well-timed for us to build a virtual digital community that's never been more connected than ever before. Of course, it was disappointing not to have a conference this year. Every year, that is uh, personally the highlight for me. Um, I really enjoy our, our annual investor conference because you bring together a, a group of people, 200, 300, very passionate about uh, Belleville, about the Foot Tracker Road corridor, uh, about the area, uh, and magic does happen. Last year, of course, we had an, an incredible conference. Uh, it really was uh, something that we will all remember. Disappointing this year that we didn't have it, but uh, watch this space. Next year, we do have uh, some really big plans. Our programs and projects, well, we've, we've been able to do as much as we can virtually, as much as we can uh, from the uh, limited operations of lockdown, just like the potholes have uh, you know, gone rife because of the restrictions, certainly so has um, a lot of activities in our business plan. But uh, our team is resourceful, um, our leadership is strong, and um, the uh, fulfillment of our business plan for 2020 slash 2021 looks like it's on track um, so far. Um, we're very, very um, grateful for the city's engagement and support for the next 12 months business plan. And we look forward to uh, being able to pr pr uh, present to our members what our plans are for the next year in the CEO's uh, uh, presentation. And then a very big highlight this year has been the establishment of new structures, um, commercially oriented structures that allow, will allow GTP to invest in the area it will allow GTP to operate um, in the area. And um, we, we look forward to um, a new commercial structure 
um, being launched in 2021 that we've been designing this year that will allow us to fulfill our mandate, that will allow us to uh, partner with the city um, and really transition. When the organization was established and one of the key measures that I have in my term as chairman is to ensure that we are self-sufficient, sustainable, and are able to grow uh, in, into a sustainable organization that's not just reliant on grant funding. And so we've been able to establish a structure, a legal structure, a legal entity that will allow us to pursue both uh, NPO um, and NGO work as well as um, for-profit opportunities. And so the, the for-profit opportunities that we pursue uh, will be able to fund and build a sustainable GTP, one that we can um, really, really um, see grow and, and fulfill its, its full mandate um, as, as a, a, a body. We also um, are very excited. If you think about now, um, we've been through a shock as a economy, as a society, as a city, but with any change, there's opportunity. Uh, it was Winston Churchill who said, never waste a good crisis or never put a good crisis to waste. And certainly, if you think about 2021, we are going to have unprecedented challenges. This pandemic is only the start of uh, economic hardship, social uh, hardship, uh, racial conflict, um, socioeconomic conflict. Um, it is going to be tough to be South African. It's going to be tough. To, to, to be living in 2021. And so it's really important that we as GTP acknowledge the reality, acknowledge that we are probably as a society more unequal at the end of 2020 than at the beginning. As a society, we have inclusivity and social partnering as a real clear mandate and agenda. And it's really, really critical that we rise to the occasion. We also think about the fact that we've proven that we don't need to be in one CBD. You know, I feel uh, validated that the GTP has had this second CBD mandate, the secondary city messaging. And certainly now, I think it's much more preferable to drive to the remote office in Belleville than necessarily to go all the way into the CBD of Cape Town. And so Belleville is well positioned to really gain from the displacement, the relocation, and the repurposing of business models. Every business in Cape Town is thinking, well, we, what space do we need? Where should we be located? And how do we bring the work closer to our employees? And so we certainly think that the secondary CBD is going to play a, a, a key part in that. And so any investment that we want to see happen in, in and around the Belleville area, I think we want all roads to lead to Belleville. And so we certainly are very supportive of Prass's initiative for the Blue Downs Corridor. We are very supportive of the city's initiative for the taxi operating company um, uh, as, per, as per policy since 2015. We are keen to see the success of the provincial Blue Dot initiative as announced by Premier Wendy earlier this, uh, uh, this month or last month. And we certainly um, do not want to be building more roads than necessary. And so as an organization, we want to see investment really centered on the PTIs, centered on public transport, and we certainly will be um, making sure that our voice is heard for any highway extension, uh, whether it's the R300, the N1, the N2, uh, we certainly do not want um, uh, people to be uh, in 1.2 people in a car. And we will be uh, in 2021 very focused, 2022 very focused on making sure that road investments lead to Belleville. And then just at a broader level, um, and to end, I think, optimistically, um, last year, you'll recall, um, uh, we spoke about the pension funds and how pension funds, we have more pensions in South Africa than Mexico, India, Russia, and China combined. And so that's really, I think, going to come to the fore with this infrastructure drive in the next year or two. But also, we are the best of junk. Yes, we might be disappointed that we're in junk status, but we are the best asset class in the junk class. And certainly that's something that we can use to our advantage. Also an advantage becoming a lower income country, which let's face facts is a reality. We will be a lower income country very soon, is that we now qualify for development aid and international aid and, and partnerships which we were precluded from uh, before, we'll now be able to gain. 
And so we are very actively pursuing funding relationships with uh, a number of international development aid organizations to bring their programs and their projects to the people of Belleville, to the people of the greater Tigerberg area so that we can have social cohesion and uh, equality. Um, and so certainly I think, you know, we, we have, uh, it's the beginning of the end or it's the end of the beginning, I should say, but it certainly is not the beginning of the end. 2021 will have its challenges. We are certainly um, not out of the woods and uh, we as an organization though uh, stand ready to play our part with regards to social inclusion, improving our built environment and making sure that all roads lead to Belleville. Justin, thank you. That's uh, very encouraging. And I'm always, in fact, I love talking to you because you're optimistic, but not only optimistic, you're actively optimistic taking advantage of the opportunities that do exist. So as, as, the, as the chairman of our board, it's been a privilege serving the last year under your guidance. And um, we always look to you for, for that kind of optimistic vision and, and we certainly utilize it. And I think your last point is more than apt in that we are extending our request for funding beyond the borders of South Africa. I think there is opportunity. I think mm -hmm. the, the vision for certainly our team is to look for that kind of partnership beyond just what we're doing at the moment. And it goes beyond grant funding. We're looking for investors in, in solutions in this area. And we not only have social development investment, but we now have commercial investment opportunities. So thank you again for your guidance and your, the guidance of the board. We, we do appreciate it. And I know I'm going to bring you back here again towards the end just to answer a few questions in case they've come through in the meantime. So, so thank you very much. We are now going to deal with, with a few statutory issues. Um, and to handle those, we have a vastly experienced person. In fact, we're very privileged to have Johan Bester on our board. Not only has he served as chairman of the board, he's had the opportunity for a very long time to now serve as the Audit and Risk Committee chairman of the, the GTP. And in his active working career was treasurer for Sunlum for a very long period of time. So the fact that we have somebody with, with such diligence in terms of dotting I's and crossing T's, um, we are privileged. And I'd like to hand over to Mr. Bester just to run through the financial statements for the year ending June 2020 and highlight any, any issues that, that may have arisen. Thank you, Johan. Thank you, Warren. As you said, there are some of the statutory items which we need to look at. First of all, our financial statements has been audited and we received a clean report from our auditors, Price, Waterhouse, Coopers. But just to lift out a few of the figures that might be of interest. At the end of June, we had cash on hand, 3.1 million, so we were liquid. We had reserves of 2.4 million, so we were solvent. Uh, from our income from the grant we received from the city, more than 70% goes straight into projects. Uh, that is a, is a very, very good percentage. And the balance that is not going into it is mainly spent on, on administration staff, paying for rent for the building and uh, the computer systems we run. So we are very happy with the financials. Um, we actually uh, has also has it approved by the board and it was presented to the city and they were also very happy with it. Uh, difficult times, but with the auditors, we did do a cash flow projection for the next year which is the last of our current grant. Uh, and we are definitely a going concern and there's sufficient funds to complete the projects which has been approved by the city. So on that, I think we should ask the members to, to note it. Uh, we've got non-voting members, so it's not necessary for them to officially approve it. The next item on, on the agenda is uh, the board. Uh, as mentioned earlier, the board is very stable, got a lot of different people with a ba different basis of knowledge, so it's well balanced. We have nine people on the board at this stage. We had only one resignation coming through uh, in, I think it was August or September last year. So that is, is working very well. The last item on my side is actually the auditors. As we said, we wanted to have a good solid international firm of auditors, price water house scoopers, that when we run, uh, run out our financing proposals locally and internationally, we can present them with, 
official financial statements that has been approved by one of the best companies in, in this area. If there's any questions of, of members about the finances, the full set is available on the website. Uh, they can send questions now or later, we will attend to it. Uh, I don't have anything else I would like to specifically lift out for this purpose. Johan, thank you very much. I think the, um, we've been privileged again to have, uh, have a keen audit, and I think the fact that, that the board have appointed PricewaterhouseCoopers as, as an audit is a testament to the status that we, we value the results in. The one question that I'm sure some of the members and some of the, the community out there would, would like to know, you've, you've touched on the fact that it's the final year of our three-year funding from the City of Cape Town. We know how critical the city's funding is. I know at a recent board meeting, the, the topic came up and we had some indication from the city that there was intention to continue the funding beyond just July, in fact, June 2021. Your, your input from the, that board meeting specifically to the funding? I think the feedback is that uh, with your assistance, we made the necessary uh, proposals to the department to which we report uh, at the city on these projects. Uh, they found it uh, very interesting and aligned with their uh, projects that have to comply with the city council decisions. So it will be included in their budget going to city council for approval. What's going to happen there? Uh, I have no idea, but... Uh, uh, it, in my opinion, it would be money well spent to continue with these projects, as we had heard earlier with our guest speaker, that thing, all these items are well aligned and is definitely uplifting for, for, the, for this area. Johan, thank you very much, and we really appreciate you being here. Okay. Um, the, the next item on the agenda, which you might have seen alongside Johan's name, was changes to the MRR, and in fact, we have this year through permission from the board and approval of the board, requested some changes to our memorandum of incorporation. And per our MRR, it requires a two thirds majority of members to approve any change to the MRR. Um, I'm very pleased to report and very grateful to those members who've signed and, and diligently gone through the changes we've suggested in the MRR. And I'll summarize those very quickly now. Um, the, the changes were firstly to take advantage of the SARS allowance of allowing us to issue Section 18A certificates for donations received by the GTP for projects that we currently involved in. That necessitated some changes recommended by SARS and we've incorporated that into our MRR, so that was one of the changes. The, the other changes were to semantically adjust some of the operating procedures for the company. One of them was to do away with the requirement to have an advisory council. To alleviate that advisory council, we're in the process of, together with the city of Cape Town, forming what we're terming a CEO's forum, which is engagement with senior executives from the major corporates in the area. And I think that replaces the advisory council quite neatly. The other requirement was, or other change was to allow a non-director to sit on the Audit Risk and Governance Committee, which was a necessity purely because we were restricted and the, and the directors were burdened. And the third one related to the two-thirds majority of members voting to be those present in, in corporate meetings. So those were the changes. We appreciate the fact that the members have approved those, and those will now be incorporated into our MOR. The, Next item on the agenda really relates to what the GTP are doing and the CEO's report. You've seen a highlighted video of some of the projects we were involved in in the last financial year. And to pick out one or two things out of that specific thing, you will have seen very briefly in that video that we accumulated almost 7 million rands worth of media exposure in the last financial year, which is testament to not only the work we're doing, but the exposure we're getting from the media channel. So we've, we've really pushing hard and exposing Belleville and Para for, for what they represent, for the infrastructural assets that they, that they sit on, and we're involved in the community in that. So please pay attention to what's happening in the media, both social, print, and other, and we'll continue that, that drive into the new year. The other point of highlight really was the fact that the, the GTP this, this last year won two international awards, two very significant international awards. 
The, the nursing clinic that we, we erected in conjunction with the Sipla Foundation at the PTI is a significant project. It was a project that's probably valued in the region of around 3 million rand. It's, it's created jobs for, for five people specifically in the health industry there. It's brought affordable health care close to a community at the transport interchange where they need it most. And that partnership with Sipla was recognized by the International Downtown Association and we received their Pinnacle Award for urban impact in, in a project of this scale. So we're deeply honored to be recognized by an association like that and they an association with, with thousands and thousands of members. The other award which we've just recently been alerted to is the fact that the Mail and Guardian have awarded us with a environmental award for our zero waste project at the schools. Now this project was, was launched at the, at the DF Milan High School and I certainly thank the, the educators and learners of the school in, in launching that project. We've now just recently been alerted to the fact that Belleville Technical High School are very interested in the same project. So the recognition from the Mail and Guardian is gonna go a long way to rolling out an educational program to reduce the amount of waste that's going to landfill. Um, so we're not only focusing on roads and infrastructure, we're really focusing on the environment and education and that project on its own is starting to gain momentum and the fact that it's been recognized by a national and international organization, I think carries credit to, to what we've been doing. Um, both the chairman and, and the chairman of the audit meeting have referenced our relationship with the city of Cape Town. It has undergone a rejuvenation and we're very pleased to be in a situation now where we're aligning a lot of the work that we're doing with projects that the city are doing. And it, it might be coincidental that the city are really focusing a lot more on the Babel area. And the work we do now be, plays a far bigger role in, in not only their work, but the work in the community. So a lot of the projects we're embarking on this year are going to be very strongly aligned with the city's vision and the city's vision for Belleville and Paro. And some of those highlights, some of the projects will continue. So the zero waste schools project will continue. The recycling projects will continue. We, we're launching a partnership with Open Streets at the back end of December, where we're highlighting pedestrianization of certain areas. So that Open Street City of Cape Town GTP relationship is very strong and we, we're launching a very exciting initiative and, and we thank Open Streets for their initiative. I've mentioned the CEO forum. We're also launching a tertiary education forum where we're engaging with senior role players from all the major universities and tertiary institutions in the area. And I think that's critical to accommodating, understanding the requirements, not only from the institutions, but also the students. Um, we're gonna be doing various CBD activities where we're launching public Wi-Fi in, in public spaces. We, we're talking to partners, not only around funding, but utilization of space for uh, public ablutions. We're looking at lighting in public spaces. So public space plays a big role in what we're doing. In conjunction with the city, and I think along the initiatives that you saw that, that the alderman presented, we embarking on the design of a public realm strategy, which talks to areas and how they're perceived by the public and how they can be utilized in creating an uplifted area and identifying a personality type of the area and different parts of the area and the city. The, the one big thing that we, we started working on a little while ago was the clock tower at the, at the civic center. And I think I've mentioned in a couple of things that every major city has a, an iconic landmark and a lot of them happen to be clock towers and Belleville's clock tower has been in a state of disrepair for a while. So we embarking not only on a fundraising initiative, but we're hoping to repair and reinstate our clock tower as the center of the Belleville area. And we're very pleased to hear that not only are we keen on it, but we've partnered now and we've got confirmation from some very well-known bands who are going to do a crowdfunding um, effort and video tomorrow. Hevel Santastis, Popo Plisica, and Rich Boy Clothing are all partnering with us to, to do a crowdfunding launch at the clock tower tomorrow. So that's very exciting news. Um, public space, as I mentioned, is very important. And the, the partnership with the city in specific areas, Elizabeth Park, Tilman Marie Park, and that Elsie's Kroll Greenbelt is so, so important. And we're working very hard with all the stakeholders and all the city departments in uplifting and repositioning that as the, the heart and lungs of, of the Belleville CBD. Um, so that's, that project's gonna continue. And then many, many other projects. I think it's important to keep track on our social media, our website, 
we touched on and, and the chairman touched on Balbo Connect. Balbo Connect is the opportunity for you guys to connect not only to each other, to connect to ourselves, to connect us to the city, to connect to all the stakeholders. Balbo Connect is there as a platform to connect our community. We, we had a webinar quite recently around why buying local was so important. And we stressed the fact that now more importantly than ever, buying local and supporting local is important. Part of the Bell Connect solution and the website and the mobile apps is a, an e-commerce marketplace platform where participants and members of the Bell Connect community can advertise their own products and sell them via an e-commerce platform. So we, we go into a digital age, we're starting to use technology, but we're using this for our community. So please look out for Bell Connect, go onto the website by all means, bellvilleconnect.co.za and start finding out what that could bring to you as a person, you as an individual, you as a business, a small business, a big business, I think it's part of the connection strategy. Um, we have now one or two last items that we need to deal with from the agenda, and that's any mem members' issues or members' things. So I'm going to let Justin just handle that quickly. If there are any issues, Justin, I think this is an opportunity for you to, while people can type any questions from the members, I think it's a statutory requirement that we have this opportunity. Um, any closing remarks from yourself with regards to what, what you've seen and heard at, at this AGM? Yes, yeah. So, so, I mean, I just wanted to uh, personally thank um, uh, everyone who uh, contributes to this organization. Um, but very importantly, I think, uh, um, uh, Warren, you, you, know, you really are delivering uh, our mandate and objective. So we want to say thank you to you and your team. Uh, many people behind the scenes making this work. Um, but just to name you know, our uh, directors, um, Sinette Ace, Johan Bester, Larry Popkus, Owen Mbundu, uh, George Kamitis, Gerard Hitke, Abdul Rish, Ra Rashid Esop. Uh, we, we really appreciate uh, your contributions as uh, non-executive directors. It's, it's a voluntary position, so the time you give us is very, very precious. Um, and also our city representatives, Johan van der Merwe, Annelies van Sale, and uh, uh, Councillor Mercer Clainsmith. We really appreciate uh, all the contributions given um, by, by uh, the, the board and its observers who make this possible. Um, I think one of the um, questions, uh, can we start addressing questions? Yes, in fact, um, I did see one of the questions coming from one of our key partners, Dion van Sell, who's chairman of the Western Cape Property Developers Forum. Um, and it's, it's, it's a very relevant question. I think it, it relates to the extension of the R300 that the alderman referred to, and I know it has brought up contentious discussions before, and in fact, it has, it's been a part of a, a lengthy conversation we've had at our board meetings. And the question is, does the GTP support or oppose the extension of the R300? And as a transport specialist and engineer, I'm going I'm to hand over to our chairman to answer that. Yeah, so we, we certainly have deliberated this at, at a board uh, level um, and produced a position paper um, that I think what's important to note about the question of the extension of the R300 is whenever you build a new freeway, it's a major undertaking. It will shape and make decisions now that we will feel for 20, 40, 50 years. So you certainly don't do it lightly and you don't do it uh, rashly. And so I think it's an important question when you think about the extension of the R300 why do it and why not? And so very briefly, the reason to do it would be to increase accessibility, to increase uh, mobility, to the argument would be to increase the city. But the counter argument is that, well, those funds in a shrinking fiscus to build that road takes away from other places. And so we can spend four to six billion rand, billion, yes, that's a B, um, to build this freeway out. Um, but what is the cost, not just economically, socially? Um, when we build freeways out, you can go to any city in America and see the freeway cities and what they've done to, to sprawl uh, and social well, lack of social integration. And look at the CO2 emissions. It's not just the cars that emit CO2. The concrete, the stone, the materials are huge emitters. And so as an organization that is socially responsible, socially, uh, about social integration, about making De Belleville a destination, and about being environmentally responsible 
to uh, hand over Belleville as a, and, and the Greater Tideburg area as a place to live, work, and, and, and play. Um, as an organization, we cannot at this point in time endorse the R300's extension from Belleville up through towards Malkbos. There are sections of it that may validate and have economic reasons to be built to alleviate localized congestion, but certainly that freeway is, is, is it's not up to, for debate that it's an acceptable thing to do, a responsible thing to do. There are ways that we can stimulate our economy that does not require this massive infrastructure build. The trickle down effects are, are, are debatable and the environmental impact is certainly undeniable. And so as an organization, we would uh, oppose the construction and the proceeding of the R300 um, with the facts, the information, and the um, and position that we have, which is we need to invest in public transport. Um, we need to aggressively push um, densification, Belleville as a destination, and the um, um, Im improvement and investment in, in the social fabric. And certainly something like a freeway of this magnitude is a centrifugal force that will rip apart all the hard work that we do as an organization. And so as an organization, um, our position is quite clear and we are happy to engage with uh, all the uh, authorities that are working on the project and are perhaps promoting it um, for the reasons and certainly putting our case forward. But should that proceed as an organization, we would uh, strongly, strongly object to it. Justin, thanks very much. I think um, it is important to understand that, that two of our very big initiatives is, and you touched on the one, densification around transport interchanges and densification utilizing public and non-motorized transport, I think is very, very critical. And the second one is creating employment. And yes, you're right. Having a, a ring, ring road around a, a central point doesn't enhance employment opportunities. We need employment to be at a place that is accessible. So there you have that answer. Um, We've had a question around uh, the homeless and, and what are we doing around the homeless? And we have various initiatives and various projects which incorporate the homeless. I know you guys would have seen a lot of our street saw activities. One of our recycling initiatives includes the putting of trolleys, recycling trolleys in the hands of homeless people who've been exceptionally well trained over a six month period to collect recycling material from connected businesses and take those to buyback centers. So we're creating employment, not only for those individuals, but we're creating a, a mini economy for the recycling within, within the CBD and working with those homeless people. We have various other initiatives and we work with some of the, the key NGOs in the area, MESTAF, in working with the homeless. We can't solve the homeless. It's not, it's not our mandate to solve the homelessness issue. We can try and alleviate some of the symptoms and try and reintegrate some of these people back in society. So we do we do work on on that as a as a project. We have Marlon Hoffman um, asking around to attract investors and create an environment that is supportive of our vision. How can the University of the Western Cape get involved in the cleaning up of the Belleville Transport Interchange and create jobs? Marlon. You're on my phone list. I'll be calling you first thing tomorrow morning. We've got a million ways that you guys can get involved. We've, we've worked very closely with the University of the Western Cape. We've worked very closely with various of the departments and, and faculties within the University of the Western Cape, as well as CPUT. And there certainly are multiple ways that you guys can get involved in helping us clean that up. So thank you very much for that question. And thank you for the commitment, which has now gone out live. So Marlon, thank you. Um, are there any other questions that I haven't asked? Kemi has asked a question. Uh, what are we doing around improving social cohesion and equality to tackle racial conflict? I think we exceptionally strong supporters of the diversity we have in Belleville. We, we have a very good relationship with the Somalian Association and the International Refugees Association. We work very closely with those communities. Again, we, we're not um, an organization that's mandated to tackle racial issues, but we work very well with communities and we certainly celebrate the diversity that the Belleville area brings into our fabric. And, and we celebrate that on a daily basis. And we do have a, we're in a, we're in a, a multi-diverse environment where we are almost a microcosm of the African continent all within one CBD. And I think that is, is one of the things that we, we do celebrate. So, yeah. and, 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 and I think as an organization in 2021, uh, you, you, would, you would have heard in my um, um, chairman's report Social inclusion, social integration is the most urgent and important objective of our partnership. 
And I'll remind everyone the GTP, the P is partnership. And so our role and our place um, as, as a partnership and a partnering organization in this area is to bring everyone together. You know, when we talk about the racial conflict and the question and the issues that are, that are playing out in the news every night, I think we are, we are all humans. We are all fathers, mothers, children. We've all been through a really, really serious shock. And deep down, we, as a partnership, need to work on uh, or, or bring uh, humanity uh, to the table and make sure that we identify our humanity. Um, know, knowing the uh, historic legacy, knowing the um, injustices of the past, knowing the inequity that exists today, that we, we might have equality in, uh, in means, but not equality in access, equality in law, but not equality in opportunity. And certainly uh, GTP wants to see Belleville being the land of opportunity for all. Perfect. Thank you. The a question from Francois, and, and we've dealt with Francois on, on various, various topics and specifically around development opportunities. Um, the GTP investigated student accommodation options to create a node for this function. What is the outcome? Francois, we're very, we're very active on, on the student accommodation. We believe it's a, it's a critical part of, of what Belleville and Para offers as this densification, we refer to the densification and we're dealing with various developers on those kind of initiatives, the, the existing relationships with the local universities and the demand still exceeds supply on student accommodation. I think we've got to be very acute as to how we plan the student accommodation and what we're seeing developing in different nodes. And you'll see that at the corner of Durban Road and Fortchecker Road, where we get a, a campusy feel to a certain node, I think starts enhancing that area and starts creating an environment where public safety becomes less of a risk and more of an attractiveness. So your yeah, student accommodation and dealing with various developers and conversions of existing buildings is very much on our, our mandate. And we, in fact, we, we're dealing with two projects like that at the moment. So it is still very much part of what we're doing. Um, have I missed any questions? I'm looking at my producer to ask if I've missed any questions. I think the, oh, here we go. No more questions. There is an opportunity to engage with us at any stage. We, we don't need to have this forum for you to ask questions. The GTP have, have open access to, to not just the members, but to the public and our community at large. So we, we welcome any engagement. We welcome any participation. We welcome any partnership. Um, you've heard us talking about funding and funding is, is, a, is a contentious issue at this time and specifically in this economic environment. Funding doesn't necessarily mean cash. Funding means participation and partnership. We look for contributions from organizations beyond just cash. And it could be time in lieu, it could be facilities in lieu, it could be just sharing information. So that's, that's where we really gain traction is partnering with various organizations and companies and, and individuals. We do implore everybody out there to step up to the plate. We need each other more than ever. I think it's important that as a community, we stand closer together, we stand supportive and we stand arm in arm. I think the initiatives that are happening from the city of Cape Town and external investors, and we do deal with external investors, and there is a, an optimistic outlook towards development in this area. We're getting attractiveness from areas in like Johannesburg, but beyond the borders of South Africa as well. So there isn't an, an interest in developing projects here. We have some very large uh, planned projects from organizations who've done successful developments elsewhere in this country now looking at Belleville. So I think there's is optimism, but I think we do need our community to support us. I think in closing, without any further questions, I do want to express a couple of thank yous. So firstly to you guys, thank you for attending and thank you for logging in. For those of you who stayed tuned in and stayed unmuted and, and volume turned up, thank you. The city of Cape Town, I'd like to express a special thanks to, to the city. They're not only our key funding partner, but we're now getting a huge amount of involvement and interaction with the various departments within the city. And it's been enlightening to see the change in um, enthusiasm from departments to some of the projects that we're involved in. And likewise, we're adapting some of our projects to, to meet the city's initiatives in the area. I think they're not only getting their, their big toes into the water in Belleville, I think they're preparing to dive into this water and I think in a big way. So I think that's really enthusiastic and thank you to the city and the sub councils we represent. 
to Truth TV and the crew behind the scenes, thank you. You guys have done an exceptionally professional job. Blodrick Media, thank you for allowing us the, the, the privilege of using your studios. To my staff and, and the partners of the GTP, thank you for all the hard work that you've embarked on over the last year. I think it's, it goes unsung. There are a lot of people behind the scenes who do a lot of work. I sit in front of the camera and, and, and we talk about some of the stuff we've achieved, but there are a lot of staff who work behind the scenes. So to my staff, our service providers and the partners, thank you for the year. And we'd like to wish you safe holidays and safe traveling if you are going anywhere before any emergency lockdown happens in the next 24 hours. But thank you for the year. And, and we look forward to engaging with you, not only in a year's time at the AGM. Please look out for our Belleville Conversations webinars and interactions. And, and we look forward to engaging with you online. Thank you.